Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to be introducing you to some uh, cool new Decksoft packs. We have the new Wasteland series that you can see here in the content store. You can just go to your featured developer uh, page for Decksoft and you can see them at the top. This is the uh, new stuff that we have available. Some really cool stuff. Uh, you can create Mad Max type scenarios or, uh, or Wastelands, post-apocalyptic. Um, always a very popular theme for content. I'm going to talk about first how to show uh, how to use the uh, vehicle. So we're going to talk about the scene builder and create a scene in a second tutorial. But in the first one, we're going to talk about uh, vehicles and how you can use them and uh, animate them. All right, so let's take a look at the different packs we have in this Wasteland Vehicles combo. So if you can go to this section here, this drop down menu, you can see there's a bunch, number of different uh, pages you can go to just to view different uh, commercialization images. And there's uh, there's videos as well. If you go here, you can. Uh, view videos of each individual pack. Uh, if we just go to uh, close this one down here, you can check out other uh, vehicles as well. Now we're going to talk about this low poly vehicles pack, which is really cool, I think. Um, there's a lot of uh, vehicles that are about a thousand polys each, and you can use, use them to populate your scene. Now they're non-animatable, but you can use them just to kind of like throw around your scene, and they don't take up much resources at all. We even have a helicopter there and uh, other cool stuff like this. And I'll show you how to customize those as we go along. All right, so uh, like I mentioned, we're going to be exclusively focusing on this vehicles pack in this tutorial. So let's close down uh, uh, Chrome there. And now we have the uh, all the vehicles here that I've uh, just shown you in a kind of a desert scene I just kind of threw together. Now the ones on the left here, including the helicopter, this uh, bus or this train uh, car here, and this one over here, these are all the low poly uh, props right here. Now the cool looking ones that look like they're out of a Mad Max movie, those are the uh, other individually sold uh, packs. You can also buy them as a combo as well. Uh, we're going to talk about how to animate these ones on the left, but I'm going to show you how you can use these ones on the right as well. So let's take a look first of all at what they're made up of. So you can see for example I have this nice looking uh, classic train car. Um, this is a low poly version. If I select it, you can see Right there, we only have a polygon count of 766. That's super, super low for a high quality asset like this. Uh, it's really useful to, you can put, like, throw a million of those in your scene and it won't cause any performance issues. This one here is about 1,100. Um, and you can see the other ones right here. If I select this uh, car right here, it's only 472. If you can see the number right there. All right, so these are really uh, super low poly assets, but they look quite nice. Now, one thing you'll notice is when you bring these into your uh, scene, I'll show you one uh, version right here. So this is this one here I've added in this one. This is the, considered the non-low poly version. And you can see it's still fairly low poly at 4,700 uh, poly. But uh, take a look at this one. I'm going to bring in the low poly version. Now, in that low poly uh, vehicle pack, if you go to my content uh, window here, uh, you'll be able to find them under Props, uh, under Decksoft, and then you'll see low poly vehicles. And under low poly vehicles, you'll have a high poly, quote unquote high poly, and also a low poly version of each, uh, each vehicle. So what I've loaded in here is the high poly version of this, uh, wagon here, or this, uh, Jeep, whatever you want to call it. And then there's a low poly version, where you can, which you can see the low poly right there. So I'm going to click and drag in this low poly, uh, version right here, and it'll load in pretty quickly. And you can notice that there's a few differences, uh, right off the bat here. Um, if we go and take a look at this one as compared to the other one, notice that, uh, you know, the windows seem detached. Um, if you're not paying close attention, you know, if it's just background prop, very easy to, just to skip all this stuff. But let's take a look what happens if we select this mesh right here. And then we go down, whoops, scroll down a little bit here, and just select two-sided. You can see when we select two-sided, we get, you know, a bit more going on here. Not necessarily too much in this particular uh, vehicle. But uh, I just want to show you the comparison between this one and this one. So this is the low poly version. Again, you're saving about uh, 3,000 polygon count, which uh, if you're low on system resources, you can use that. I'm going to delete that one for now. I'm going to show you this this uh, vehicle over here. And what I meant by, if I go to materials and two-sided, you can see two-sided is currently selected. But by default, it's deselected. So what happens right here is you'll see that uh, you can see through the vehicle and we're only seeing the one side. Now again, depending on you know the scenario, what, how you're using it in your scene, you may want to keep this off. Uh, save very little bit of system resources, but I generally like to keep it on just so we can kind of you know get at least the illusion of having uh, another side to this prop right here. 
And, uh, you know, you can uh, modify a lot of uh, values on these as well, uh, as opposed to uh, including the two-sided. Aside from the two-sided, you can choose, like, specular right here, and you can uh, adjust the specular and glossiness of values. And the, the mesh is, uh, for the low-poly versions, the mesh is one single uh, mesh object right here, so everything will be thrown together. Now, uh, that's pretty much it for the materials. Again, you can, uh, you know, change the colors and everything like that as well if you want to go down to... Uh, Hue, saturation, uh, brightness. You can modify these values, uh, make it a bit uh, greener uh, for any reason if you want to do that. Um, you got to be careful with uh, how you modify these, but you can adjust them ever so slightly. Um, I'll probably bring this back down to zero. Um, hue might be a, a good modifier to use as well. You can uh, increase or, or decrease the hue or adjust the hue value. And in addition to that, there's a brightness and a contrast, which as you can see, the results of those um, depending on the situation you want or the scenario that you have your uh, vehicle in. Um, generally, I'll keep it like this. Now, one thing you may want to do as well as a lot of these meshes will come with an ambient color uh, as white. You can just select the ambient color and change it to a darker color, which is more in line with uh, the iClone defaults. And you'll get like a sort of a darker um, ambient color like that, which can be useful in certain scenarios. But we're not going to worry too much about that right now. You know how to modify, or you should probably know how to modify most of the materials um, just by messing around with these values right here. Keep in mind that the uh, green text means that it's keyframeable. means you can adjust it as time goes on through the timeline. All right, so you can uh, modify those the white, the white uh, text values, parameters you cannot. Well, so let's take a look quickly at how to, uh, say, for example, I want to add a cool-looking uh, graffiti to the side of this uh, VW bug here. So what I'm going to do, you can see we already have a decal on there, which looks pretty cool, uh, text Texic Labs, I guess. So I'm going to select this, and I'm going to go to Materials, and you can see we have our Diffuse Map right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load this Diffuse Map and launch it into Photoshop. And when, once in Photoshop, I'm going to import in a uh, cool-looking graffiti uh, tag, I guess. You can find it just by you know searching graffiti tags pretty much on uh, Google Images. Um, I have mine saved to the desktop, I believe. There we go. King2, uh, 1280 is what it's called. I just searched for this. Make sure you have PNG selected so it's a transparent image. And I'm just going to open this up in Photoshop as well. So I'm going to open with uh, Photoshop since we already have it loaded up. All right, so you can see we have this cool looking uh, transparent image. Now I can press Control A, Control C, copy that, go to this image and press Control V and paste it on here and then press Control T to, you know, transform the position and, and size. And we can easily place it, um, you know, resize it and place it, uh, on the side of our, our VW bug right here. And you just want to shrink it down a tiny little bit there. You know, something like that. Then just press enter. And then we can save this out. Go to file, save as. And we'll just save it as a JPEG to our desktop here. And uh, there we go. We'll just call it whatever that is. And load that in into uh, iClone here. Let's go into diffuse. There it is. And load that in. And I believe we loaded it onto the other side of the car, so that's fine. You can see it right there. I press the forward slash key to rotate my light. You can see we have that graffiti on the side of the car, which, you know, looks fine and dandy. But say, for example, we wanted to make that graffiti look a little bit more aged. It's looking a little fresh right now. So maybe we want it to look a little bit more aged, like it's been there for a while. Uh, like this car is uh, fairly aged as well. We can easily create that effect by uh, creating a mask in Photoshop. So let's go to uh, King P and G here. So what I'm going to do is go into uh, iClone, back into iClone here, and go into Materials. And under Materials, under Images, under Blend, you have a bunch of blend maps here. You can right-click those and select Find File, and it'll find all those blend maps. These come embedded with iClone 6. And what I'll do is I'm just going to right-click this one and load it up into Photoshop. All right, so now we have this image right here. And what I'm going to do, just zoom in a little bit, I'm going to use my magic wand tool here. It's very magical. Make sure that you have contiguous, uh, contiguous deselected because we want to select all the white stuff in this entire image here. I'm going to just click in the white area right there and should select most of the white stuff there. You can refine your selection as well using, you know, various other methods. Um, we're just going to keep it the way it is right now. So what I want to do here is uh, control C and copy all this stuff right here. And I'm going to go to my uh, graffiti image, press control V and then control T. We're going to kind of increase the size of it here just to, uh, you know, um, 
place it over the uh, entirety of the image there. So now you can see it looks pretty cool. Unfortunately, this white area is not transparent. So what we, what we actually want to do, if we press enter to uh, apply that, what we actually want to do is make this uh, white selected area into a mask. So what I'm going to do is select my graffiti layer. And then I'm going to go here and select add mask. Uh, and that's going to add a mask onto my uh, selection right there, or onto my uh, layer rather. And then on the texture layer, what I want to do is I want to uh, go select and load selection down here. And I'm just going to load that layer one uh, transparency. Just press OK. And you can see this is, we have it, this all selected right now. And then I'm going to turn off my texture layer because I no longer need that. And then I'm going to go to my uh, mask on my layer zero. What we can do here is we can fill the entire thing in black. Or, just to show you an example here, I'm going to select a black color, make sure I have the entire black selected, or pitch black rather, and just use my brush. And I'm going to choose a different brush rather than this one here. That was from my previous example. I'm just going to select something like this. And then you can see if I paint black over top of my mask, you can see certain areas now become faded out according to these selections that we made. So now we have this... Uh, uh, you know, it looks a lot more aged. You know, if we want to uh, create our own custom uh, section of the mask, we want to, you know, enhance the blend map, then we can go and select, you know, another brush, like the one I had previously selected right here. And uh, you can go just select, you know, brushes, uh, brush presets and everything like this. I have my uh, roundness selected to 50%, so it's more a bit more narrow. You can even do something like uh, 25%, and then you, you get something like this. Um, it's a bit extreme, so 40%. And um, and then if we control D and deselect it, then we can just you know paint over top of like this, and we can you know create our own kind of kind of uh, aged effect like that just by you know clicking and dragging and uh, creating some you know similar effect like this, which is you know kind of cool. So we can create our own aged effects as well on top of the, uh, uh, the the blend map and everything like that. So we can go ahead and just go save this out. We'll save as and we'll save as a JPEG to our desktop. It's a convenient way to do it. Oh, we don't want this to be a JPEG, actually. We need to select a PNG because we want to retain that transparency. Make sure you uh, have a PNG saved instead. And we'll just call this a uh, test. Save it to our desktop. Okay. And then we'll import it into uh, this image right here. Um, let's go back to uh, let's find test here. And I can simply just click and drag this into uh, onto this image. And it will create it as a layer. And then we can uh, place it where we like. Let's place it on this side this time. So zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see a little bit better. And uh, there we go. Let's uh, rotate it slightly. And we can place it somewhere like this. And then we have the nice, um, you know, kind of uh, effect where it looks like it's a bit more aged and the, the paint is kind of wearing off there. And press enter. Oops. Make sure you press enter here. And save that out. This can be saved as a JPEG. There we go. Onto the desktop. And we'll just replace this current one. Okay. And then back into icon here. Whoops. And let's load in the same image. And here we go. Now we should have the more aged looking graffiti on this side. All right. So, you know, just a little quick example of how you can enhance these, uh, these vehicles with kind of, uh, you know, old looking graffiti like that. So it looks a little bit better than the, uh, pure black that we had before. And you can also, you know, change the color instead of black. You can use another color and other and various stuff like that, which we're not going to get into in this tutorial here. But the last thing I want to show you is how to animate the wheels. Now, for this one, we're going to use the actual vehicles, uh, vehicles that have animatable wheels. So if I select any of these low poly versions like this, and I go to my scene manager, you can see there is no sub props, which means they have no animatable wheels uh, separately. Like I said, they're just kind of background or side pieces and stuff like that. So let's focus on, we can do really any uh, any vehicle right here. Let's just choose this uh, one right here. This one looks pretty cool. Now, what you can do with this one is, if I go into the uh, sub props here, you can see we have wheel back left, back right, wheel front left, wheel front right. Now, if I want to animate these, I have to animate them manually, unfortunately. So I can select the desert bull. If I right click, there's no perform currently loaded in. So what I want you to do is uh, animate them manually. So what I'm going to do is start with the front left wheel. I'm going to right click that and you can see there's no uh, performance right now. So what I'm going to do is go to frame 25. This is how you animate a wheel, the easiest way. I'm just going to go down here, enter 25 into frame 25. 
And then we're going to go to our uh, edit tab right here. And I'm going to press the E hotkey on the wheel and rotate it forward. You can see the X value on the right going forward. We're going to rotate it forward to a value of 90. So I'm just going to enter in 90 right there. And then I'm going to go to frame 50. And I'm going to enter in a value of 180. And then frame 75. And I'm going to enter in a value of 270. Enter. And then frame 100. And then enter in a value of 360 under rotate right there. So now if I press F3 and go into my timeline, you can see we have, if I have object related track selected, you can see we have a transform keyframe and we have a rotating wheel. Pretty cool. Now you can, you know, copy and paste all those transform keyframes or what you can do is you can just click and drag in the collect clip track and you can uh, zoom in, make sure you have it uh, all selected and then right click and select add to perform. We'll just call it rotate. All right. So now we have rotate added into our uh, wheel. And if I right click the wheel, remove object animation, takes, get, gets rid of all those keyframes. You can see there's no animation right now. Then I can right click it. And now we have a perform option and I can select rotate. And this is really cool because what I can do now, if I go into my animation track, you can see I have this animation clip right here. Let's just bring it back to frame one and I can make sure I have loop selected and click and drag and I can loop it as many times as I want. So now we have this wheel that keeps on looping and looping and looping and looping and looping. All right. Now, unfortunately, what you have to do is you have to do that for um, all the wheels. So an easy way to like kind of half uh, put your workload in half for that is I'm going to just hold the uh, press the W hotkey, control click and drag, and that's going to create a copy of my front left wheel. And then I'm going to take my rear left, I'm going to align that. So I'm going to press uh, this button right here, also control L is a hotkey. I'm going to align it to my back left wheel right here. So I'll select back left, press X, Y, and Z, and press enter, and then select back left wheel and just delete it. And then we have it replaced with this one right here. And then if I play back, you can see there is both wheels animated for that length of time. And it also retains that uh, perform uh, as well. So if I go to perform, I can just manually select rotate here as well. All right. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That's one way you can do it. Now, unfortunately, you can't do it for the, uh, um, the right hand side. You can't copy and paste this one to the right hand side because it's going to be uh, rotating the exact opposite way. So if I, uh, you know, control click and drag this one over here and then I rotate it, uh, 180 degrees on the, uh, Z axis there, you know, you think, oh, it'd be really easy. I can just, you know, add it onto this side, do the same thing. Unfortunately, if I play back, you can see it'll be going in reverse uh, for this side. So you have to repeat the same process for the uh, front right wheel and then transfer that to the rear right, uh, rear right wheel there. All right. So that's kind of how you can uh, really quickly animate the, uh, the wheels. And, you know, if I wanted to uh, have this truck move forward through my uh, barren wasteland here, well, it's as easy as just adding a transform uh, keyframe. So let's just go to frame one. Make sure he's planted squarely on the ground here. It's kind of an up and down terrain though. So um, uh, let's go to, you know, frame one, the, the wheels stop turning, something like this. And let's move the truck forward on the Y axis and, you know, something like this. And we'll go ahead and uh, play back right there. Okay. And the rear one stops uh, working, but uh, we're focusing on the front one right now. Now, if you want this wheel to, you know, have physics values and climb the terrain and everything like that, that's a whole nother tutorial. But what I'm just showing you here is just uh, some basic animations for how to uh, rotate your wheels and transfer that rotation perform uh, to the other wheel. So you can easily right click and uh, select it and loop it with clips in the timeline. So that's really about all I wanted to show in this tutorial, guys. Just kind of how to, uh, how you can customize the appearance of these vehicles, uh, with some, you know, custom graffiti, uh, and how you can animate the wheels. So make sure you check out our other tutorial on the Decksoft Wasteland series where we're going to be building a scene from scratch. Some really cool stuff, creating a post-apocalyptic landscape. So, uh, as well, check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com. And thanks so much for watching.